Hello everyone, in this video we will learn how to make permissive functions, meaning a function with permissions. What we actually want to do is making a contract with a variable and we already have a lot done. We have a variable word, we have a getter and this is accessible to anyone. So anyone can call the function get word and get the value of the word. But as a creator of the contract, you want to be the only one that's able to actually modify the contract. And you have a handy functionality here and it's called transaction origin. So you have five accounts to play with and those are different accounts basically. When you press the button create, the contract will be created from this address. So let's verify it. If you are familiar with object-oriented programming, well, a contract is like a class, basically. So in all classes, we have something that's called a constructor. And a constructor is a function that will be called at the creation of the instance of that, of that contract. So we create something like a blueprint and we will actually deploy it on the blockchain. It will create a physical representation of this blueprint on the ledger, on the blockchain. So we want to quickly save who created the contract. And this can be done fairly easy in something that we call a constructor. So remember, a constructor is a function that is called at the beginning of the deployment of your contract. So the way to do it is write function, then you just copy the name of the contract as if and that's it, you have your constructor. So let's verify that it works. And let's save the issuer address. So the address from which we are creating the contract and it will, this will be this address. Let's save it in a variable and then print it. So we will be able to check if the constructor actually works. And usually we put the, what's called a state variable, state variable here. And then we put the constructor. So we'll create another state variable of type address. And this is a solidity type. So just type address and issuer. And that's all. We just declare it without any instantiations because we don't know who will instantiate the contract. It can be this account, it can be this account, this, this account, this account. We don't really know. But we will know that when the contract will be created. So when it will be created, we'll just assign the message sender, and this is a reserved keyword in Solidity, issuer is equal message dot sender. And basically every time that you call something on the blockchain, you provide it with a message. And this message object has a lot of different datas. And one of the datas that is useful for us is the sender data. And the sender represents the address of the issuer. So this is convenient. We will just save the issuer and we'll just make it public. This is an excellent use case for using the public keyword. We don't really want to hide it. It's for testing purposes and we don't need to make a specialized getter for that. So fa uh, fairly simple, we'll create it and we can have the address of the issuer and it's CA35B and it's finished by 733C. So it's basically the, the same address. So now if I deploy it from this address, a new transaction will be created and the address will be changed to this one. So you see how it works, right? We'll just erase it. Actually, we, we will not erase it. Issuer, address, issuer, because we need it. We need it to check if the person that is uh, firing a transaction on the blockchain is the right issuer. So when the contract is deployed, we record the initial issuer, so we know who created the contract. And now, because in our use case, we want to restrict this function to only the creator of the contract, we can do it in a very simple manner. And we can do it in two different ways. As always, I will show you the most easy way to do it, and then the most complex, but more, more convenient way to do it. So if issuer is not message sender so that means that if the one firing the transaction of said word is not the creator as registered at the beginning of the contract then we will um, we can throw an error but here i will just return a string 
This is not the creator. Okay, and else... We don't really need to make an else because a return statement will just stop the execution of the contract, but for readability reasons here and because some of the people are not very are not necessarily uh, proficient in programming, I will do it that way so it will be more logical. And we actually will return this is the creator. So here at the creation of the contract, we save the address of the creator and when someone else wants to change the variable word, we will actually check if the ones that's firing the transaction is the creator. If it's not, we will return this is not the creator. If it is, then we will change the variable. So let's try it. I am on the first account. I'm creating the contract. And yeah, let's let's try to change the variable. But now we are not the creator account. We are another account. And I want to create hello, hello stranger. I want to set hello stranger to our word variable. And this is not the creator. So if I check the hello world variable, it's the same. If I check the get word variable, the hello world hasn't changed. However, I will delete that. It's just a log. However, if I change to the creator of the of the contract and I want to like here it is, it's still hello world and I want to change it to hello I am the creator. This is the creator and if I refresh the variable word, I have the new value of the word variable. So just to show you that this function is accessible to anyone else. Here you have it. Hello, I'm the creator. And this is not possible. Simply because at the beginning of the function, we check if the issuer is the right issuer or not. Well, I told you that there's another way to do it, and there is. Because here it's very simple, you have just one condition. But let's say you have a plenty of conditions, and you have plenty of functions. So you have five different functions like that, and everywhere you have to use the same code. Well, it is not very useful, because every time you will basically have this, if issuer is not message sender, then return something, okay? So there is something in Solidity called the modifiers. We will use them now. I will actually use them and then I will explain how it works. I usually create them after the constructor, modifier, and we will call it if issuer. And this is like a function. So basically we will we will copy it here. And we will erase that. Sorry, this online editor is not very convenient, but it's a very quick way to test your contract. So, okay, so now we have two errors. And the first error is you can't really return something, but a modifier is basically a condition check that you will be able to uh, put here before the function. Thus, uh, the logic you'll put here will be appended before the contract. However, you will not be able to return something in the modifier, so we'll have to get rid of it. We actually put the conditions we want to test here. So if issuer not message sender, then we will throw. So we will have an error if the issuer is not the right one. And else, and again, I will use it in a more programmatic way, but not the best way. And else, we have this underscore and this underscore means continue. So basically, if we put the modifier here, if issuer, this will mean that at first, when someone will call the function, we will go first through the modifier. So we will check if issuer is not message sender, we'll throw, else we will have an underscore. And underscore means continue to execute what's next in the function. So the underscore will actually be replaced by by that, right? So that's how it works. And we'll check it right now. 
We'll deploy the contract from the first address. Let's say hello, flat wolf again. I know I like some some imaginations here, but this is the creator and the value has been changed. So now if I change to another account and I try to hello uh, stranger, I will get a error in valid operation code. And this is fired by the throw statement. So then there you have it. You can either do the logic inside the function or you can create a modifier to do it for you. So here we have it, folks. You can actually make permissive functions and you can make modifiers. If it's not very clear, don't worry. I will go through it in details later and I will make crash courses on smart contract where we'll be able to make smart contracts from scratch, basically. So see you in the next lesson.